All right, hello and welcome to the first pharmacy episode on the Lazing Healthcare podcast. My name is Dr. Ashley Bancy, and today we have a very accomplished pharmacist who will discuss the role of the pharmacist in healthcare and bring awareness about how the scope of pharmacy has changed over the years. We will also briefly touch on how COVID-19 has impacted pharmacists and the essential services they provide and give some advice to any aspiring pharmacy listeners. Our guest today is Dr. Christine Wakehead. She graduated from the University of Waterloo School of Pharmacy and completed a pharmacy residency program at the Center for Family Medicine. She is now working in two different pharmacist roles, one being at the New Vision Family Health Team and the other at Breslau Pharmacy. Welcome, Christine. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, let's get into our first discussion point. So now as a pharmacist myself, I sometimes get patients or other healthcare professionals who do not fully understand what pharmacists do, and I often hear the stereotype of pharmacists being quote-unquote pill counters. Christine, what would you say is the general role of the pharmacist nowadays, and why is this stereotype wrong? I think that's a really good question, Ashley. Um, the, the big thing, I guess, with pharmacy is that the role can look so different depending on the setting you work in. So I think already that on its own may lead to stereotypes or just some mystery, I guess, behind what pharmacists actually do. I would say the general role, if you're thinking about a community pharmacist, Uh, really is uh, patient focused. Uh, We really try to help patients in any way we can. Yes, we count pills, but there are so many other things we do, even just at the pharmacy level. We do flu shots. uh, We help people quit smoking. We can do medication reviews, and we can help manage chronic diseases, uh, all from your friendly neighborhood pharmacy. Uh, So I think there's so much more that pharmacists do um, aside besides counting pills. And uh, that doesn't even begin to touch what we do really uh, as a profession. Uh, When you think of pharmacy too, you think of people who may not be on medications and who just walk in because they have a question about their health or or a minor ailment. And, And we do all of that. We counsel we recommend products. So there's so much that pharmacists do to help the general public. I think, again, it depends on the setting, of course. Um, but at the end, we are all clinicians really working towards helping support our patients in any way we can. Perfect. And other than this pill counter stereotype, in your opinion, what are two other main misconceptions that the population generally has about pharmacists or the pharmacy team? So this is a really tricky question. I think the pill counter one really is a common uh, misconception. And it's quite difficult, honestly, to think of two. Again, because I work in different settings, I do see um, variation of people in in different ways. And the people I work with and the patients I see are very familiar with what I do. So there's a little bit less of, uh, I guess, misconceptions in that sense. When, when I think of one in particular, I really think of people not understanding that we, we are healthcare providers. Um, you know, they see us in a pharmacy or a big box store, and I think they forget that we are part of their healthcare team. Right. And, and I don't, like, that's fair to say. I think it's, it's quite difficult sometimes because they don't understand what we do. We're behind a counter. They don't uh, see what we do. It's not like we're saying out loud, okay, I'm looking to see if this medication is for the right indication. I'm making sure it's safe. Like we're not saying these things out loud. Um, So it may look like we're just counting pills, putting a sticker on a box, maybe typing a few things in the computer, and then we're charging people. So I think that's another thing too is um, there's sort of a disconnect of if you're being charged out of cash, it doesn't really connect the patient back to, wait, this is a healthcare provider who's able to help me. So I think, of course, it depends on the province you're in and the setting you work in. Um, But a big misconception I really think is that we are not part of the healthcare team. Um, It's really hard to, I think, overcome that. Um, 
another thing too. People think we're part of big pharma. They're quite surprised when we say, oh, we want to de-prescribe a medication because they think we just want to keep adding more because we'll get more money or whatever reason they're thinking. Um, so I think, you know, again, it's hard to separate and, and figure out other misconceptions, but the main one besides the pill counter, I think really would be that we're not a healthcare provider or part of their healthcare team. That's interesting. And since you work in two different pharmacy atmospheres, can you describe your role as a pharmacist in each of your workplaces? And what would be the key aspects of these workplaces? Yeah, I think it's really important that uh, no matter where you work as a pharmacist, for your, you, you, you are a clinical pharmacist. You, you have expertise and knowledge in medication, in chronic um, management of diseases. And so I think at the base, everyone can say that you have a clinical role. Uh, the two at pharmacy environments that I work in, the first one is a community pharmacy, an independent. So we try and make our independent pharmacy quite service-based, uh, which means we do uh, a few services for our patient population. We'll do injections, uh, we'll do INR testing. So if a patient is on a blood thinner, they can come in and check if the blood thinner is still safe and effective for them. Uh, we do a lot of diabetes counseling. So we try and be quite clinical within a pharmacy atmosphere. And I think the fortunate thing I have is because it's an independent, we kind of have freedom to do what we want in that sense. So yes, we provide our traditional pharmacy services of uh, dispensing medication, but we do try to do so much more and we try to engage the community. On the other side of things, I work in a family health team environment. And I would say the main difference between the two is the amount of information I am privy to. While at the community pharmacy, I could just simply send over fax to a physician or another prescriber to ask for more information. At the family health team, I immediately have access to a patient chart, and that includes everything, all the tests, um, all the consult notes, the, the doctor notes. So it makes things a little easier, or rather, I can definitely tailor recommendations a lot um, better in that sense, uh, in that environment. I find in the family health team environment, the physicians uh, know exactly what I can do. Um, and they utilize me to the best of my ability. So I will be managing chronic conditions. I'll be managing diabetes for them. I'll be managing hypertension. I'm part of memory clinic. So um, we have a bit of a multidisciplinary team and we help support p uh, patients living with dementia. And so I think it's just as clinical as a community pharmacy. The only difference is that I have access to all the information and the prescriber, if ever, I just want to have a chat back and forth because I find collaboration is, is obviously optimal for any patient. But when you can do it face to face, it really does make a big difference. That's great. And now with COVID-19 affecting almost everything, um, how has COVID-19 affected you and the essential services you provide in each of these workplaces? So it's uh, been definitely um, a weird time, we'll say. A lot of adapting to a, a new normal. Uh, every day is different uh, in both environments. Uh, I find I'm fortunate in the family health team because we're a big organization uh, and we do have prescribers who need to see COVID patients, we do have access to PPE. So in that sense, I'm able to provide the essential services that we, or rather services we've deemed essential. Uh, one of them being, again, that INR testing with uh, patients on anticoagulants. So we've decided to continue offering that service at the family health team because I have full PPE. So I will have a gown, I will have a mask, shield, gloves, uh, we have hand sanitizer. We're really well equipped there. In terms of our other appointments for our other programs in the family health team, we've actually moved to virtual or conference visits. So we now do things over the phone and we're currently testing a few platforms to see how we can do face-to-face um, -face virtual visits. So there is obviously an Ontario OTN, um, but when you're a bigger team, uh, we're just trying to find the simplest way for patients to be able to see them face-to-face. 
So things like counseling on insulin have actually become extremely tricky if you don't see them in person or if you're trying to do that over the phone. At the community pharmacy, uh, we have a lack of PPE. So we're really trying to grab whatever we can. Um, we're very fortunate again because there's lots of donations. So we've got some shields and some masks. And so we've continued to offer our injection services and our INR services, but we've actually locked the pharmacy so it's not open to the public. So a patient would call or email or fax something in for us to fill. Uh, or if they need any over-the-counter product and then they would phone us when they're uh, in our parking lot and we would just run out with a mask and hand over whatever they ordered. Um, just because of lack of PPE, we really want to make sure we're a small team that everybody's safe, both for the team members and for the patients coming into the pharmacy. That's great. And lastly, for anyone in our audience who's aspiring to become a pharmacist themselves, uh, what advice would you give to them? I think the number one thing is to really be sure this is something you want to do. And the best way to do that is to actually either shadow, volunteer, or work in a pharmacy. And not for just a couple of weeks, really take your time there because of course there's always a learning curve when you start any position. So you got to get over that hump, that initial hump, and then see if you really truly enjoy what you're doing or what you're seeing the pharmacist is doing. Uh, pharmacy, the program itself is, is challenging. It's amazing. It's, it really is a great program uh, to go into. So anyone who really wants to um, aspire to become a pharmacist, I would strongly suggest going to work at a pharmacy first because like I said, it's challenging. Um, it, there's a financial uh, cost there. And of course there's a lot of time spent. So you really wanna make sure your, the sacrifices you're doing are, are in benefit of your career. You really, really need to be sure you'll be happy because if you are happy, you will not, doesn't matter how hard you work, you will not realize that, that you're working. Um, uh, like I said, I work in a couple of different pharmacy environments. I work six days a week and it it's just a joy. Like I truly love what I do. And so I'm able to do that. I've been doing six days a week now for at least two years. And, and I continue to do that because I really enjoy what I do. So you really want to be sure and, and don't be scared, you know, chase your dreams. If, if you don't think you're, you're good enough, your grades are good enough, whatever it may be, like reach out to someone you know, don't be afraid to have a mentor and really try because I really think the profession is a great profession. Perfect. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for our questions and answers. Thank you, Christine, for your thoughtful insights on the role of the pharmacist and these two interesting workplaces. I hope that the scope for pharmacists continues to expand as they're such a vital and accessible resource in our communities. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right. Bye, Christine. Bye-bye.